Hey everybody, welcome to Catholic NYC Presents. I'm Colin Acaza. Before anything else, please join me in a prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, everybody, welcome back to Catholic NYC Presents. I hope you're doing well. Happy Easter. Remember, we're still in the Easter season. And as usual, I just want to share a little brief um, about the divine mercy messages that Jesus was delivering to St. Faustina Kowalska, an amazing saint in the church. And she specifically talked about how important it is to pray the divine mercy chaplet for those who are dying. And so I'm just going to read very briefly what Jesus promises for those who pray the chaplet for those who are dying. And first, this is actually coming from God the Father, and this is coming straight out of her diary. God the Father says, at the hour of their death, I defend as my own glory every soul that will say this chaplet, or when others say it for a dying person, the indulgence is the same. Very powerful. When this chaplet is said by the bedside of a dying person, God's anger is placated, unfathomable mercy envelops the soul, and the very depths of my tender mercy are moved for the sake of the sorrowful passion of my son. And this is what Jesus says. He says, when they say this chaplet in the presence of the dying, I will stand between my father and the dying person, not as the just judge, but as the merciful savior. And it was also very clear from God that you don't necessarily have to be in the physical presence of the person dying. You can do it right in your living room or wherever you happen to be. And this is what this is coming from Jesus. And we have to remember, St. Faustina was just a prophet, meaning she was revealing messages for all of us. So when Jesus was talking to her, she was ta- he was talking to all of us. And this is what Jesus says. He says, pray as much as you can for the dying. By your entreaties, that is insistent prayers, obtain for them trust in my mercy, because they have the most need of trust and have it the least. He says, be assured that the grace of eternal salvation for certain souls in their final moment depends on your prayer. You know, the whole abyss of my mercy, so draw upon it for yourself and especially for poor sinners. And St. Faustina revealed to us what happens when you start praying the chaplet for those. So I mean, this is her reflecting in her diary. So beautiful. Listen to this. She says, I often attend upon the dying and through entreaties obtain for them trust in God's mercy. And I implore God for an abundance of divine grace, which is always victorious. Always victorious, she says. She says, God's mercy sometimes touches the sinner at the last moment in a wondrous and mysterious way. Outwardly, It seems everything were lost, but it is not so. The soul, illumined by a ray of God's powerful final grace, turns to God in the last moment with such a power of love that in an instant it receives from God forgiveness of sin and punishment. Now, if you're reading this correctly, she's talking about not only is the soul being forgiven, but they're skipping purgatory and going straight to heaven. Huge grace. She says, while outwardly, it shows no sign of either repentance or contrition because souls at that stage no longer react to external things or how beyond comprehension is God's mercy. I just beg all of you out there to please pray the divine mercy chaplet for those who are dying and add, especially those who are in danger of hell. Now, don't, you know, pray the chaplet and be like, all right, my mom and dad are all set, whoever might be sick and I don't need to get them a priest. No, that'd be a gross misunderstanding of what I'm saying here. But think if you can get a priest to that person, absolutely do everything in your power. But think of all the people out there who are dying without the sacraments, who aren't even Catholic, and especially right now with all that's been going on. So I just beg of you to please take that up every day. And I'm very excited for tonight. We have an amazing couple on tonight, Sarah and Andrew Swaff- Swafford. Uh, guys, thank you so much for being on the show. And please just tell us about how you're doing, how your family's doing, and then feel free to launch right into your message for all of us today. Oh, well, thanks for having us. Uh, Colin, I I loved meeting you when I was in New York City a couple of years ago. Um, I have such a love for New York City, ask him. Uh, It was the first time that I had ever been there. And it was, I was what, 35 years old. And it was so iconic and just like, well, you know, walking around, driving around, it was just amazing. But to top all of that was getting to hang out with the young adults Um, and just everyone who showed up that night in that square outside. I can't even tell you, um, just amazing work you guys are doing. And then also so fitting that you started with such a beautiful um, explanation of divine mercy. Uh, Swaff and I are huge 
uh, St. Faustina fans, but also St. John Paul the Great fans. And um, we've actually led pilgrimage over to Poland and we've been able to pray at her tomb and uh, just taking uh, people over there, you just fall more and more in love with it all the time. And so you're hitting like all my favorite things here tonight yeah. already, so. Yeah, Colin, thanks so much, especially our world now. We have such a performance-driven culture, right? So you, I gotta earn God's love, right? And it's like, no, 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 come to the divine physician in your weakness and the solidarity with us not just individually but with all the dying as you said that we are a body and what we do can affect the whole amen yeah and it's really great that you had us on tonight to be with your young adults um because swaf and i have actually been talking a lot about um the emails and the instagram messages and the like we've been people have been reaching out to us on twitter instagram all the social media platforms and um, we've been kind of taking mental note of what the questions are about and we've been chatting about them. Um, and so it was really funny when you said, no, you have 25, 30 minutes, talk about whatever you want. And it was really funny because I told Fuff, I was like, what do we, like, what do you want to talk about? And we started naming off like all these things. And I was like, he said 30 minutes, not six hours. So we want to like start off by just saying that um, we could talk about a, a lot of different things, but we've Kind of narrowed it down to a few um and we also just want to like really start off by saying um you guys like a lot of you watching tonight are in new york city um and new york has been one of the hardest hit places and so we just want to start off by saying like we love you our prayers are with you we know that you're going through something um that's even a little bit more intense and different than we are here in rural kansas you know we're out in kansas um, but then i also know that there are people tuning in from all over the world because i've had some aussies uh Hey, Australia. Uh, I had a bunch of Aussie questions today. I had people that sent some stuff in um, from all over. And so, and we're all being affected by this. So one, we're in this together. Two, we could spend this entire 30 minutes just talking about like the reality of what is right now. Uh, but we've decided to narrow it down to three that we've been hearing about a lot and we're not gonna be able to do justice to it, but um, we just wanted to throw out some kind of ideas, some things. It, I think more than anything, just to say like, these are three things that people are struggling with and you're not alone, especially all the young adults out there. But I know there's like adults out there. There's people of all age out there watching this right now. So take what affects you personally, but you also might be taking something for a friend, something for a loved one, um, whatever it is, but just take that net and try to catch something. If it helps, great. Um, but we were going to go after sloth and then envy and then exes. And I started laughing when I was reading on social media because someone was like, you guys are going to talk about your exes. <laughs> like, and I was like, uh, well, we could, but, um, another episode. that's another episode, right? Yeah. <laughs> the life before we dated, um, whew, that would be an interesting episode. So, but what we kind of meant was exes, meaning I had just been hearing from a lot of people, um, that, you know, like text your ex is kind of a big thing right now. People are, um, the loneliness, the boredom, the sloth, the comparison, you know, all the things that, um, I speak on a lot as, okay, like what, how does social media affect us? Um, especially emotionally, personally, spiritually, uh, it does. Um, I'm not a hater. I love it, but it does affect us. And so we kind of just wanted to tackle these three things in, in light of coronavirus in the sense that everything has been moved online. And so, um, whatever was there before, we're actually having to work through it. And it's our only means of communication in a lot of ways. So if that makes sense to everyone, that was kind of how we thought that we would start this and preface this. And then we're just going to dive into um, this like sloth and envy and then exes are just like relationships. Um, and just so it's known to all those out there who are like, who the heck are all these people? Um, we're married. We've been married 15 years this summer. Uh, we have five kids. Uh, Swaf is a professor at Benedictine College. Um, that's actually where we're coming to you live from his office because our house is too loud and doesn't have good internet. So anyway, and then I um, love hanging out with teens and young adults. And I love every once in a while I get to travel and hang out with really cool people. And so we hang out with a lot of students. Benedictine has 2000 college students across the street. So we listen and we miss you. Um, but we listen to people all over the world and we have friends all over the world. and. Um, you're just not alone with this. So this is a repeat thing we've been hearing and that's what we wanted to talk about tonight. Yeah, talking to my college students, so they, they miss their friends, they miss the sacraments and they're, they're 
you know, uh, often lonely and bored and all the things that kind of made them tick that they had they can't rely on now. And, and that gives rise to other temptations and other, um, uh, you know, when, when you're sad and lonely and bored and kind of restless, that, then there's other things that pop up. And that really is the context for sloth. So I guess just briefly, I think about my own life, my own conversion. And I, I grew up Catholic, but kind of a name only and really kind of found my faith in college. And one of the um, powerful reasons for that was a key professor of mine, um, but just really kind of introduced me to the moral life in, in a classical sense. You go back to people like Aristotle, where the moral life is about happiness. And we think of happiness as kind of just subjective contentment, but what he meant is kind of a much more objective thing, the objective perfecting of our nature that when, when you go all out in life, that's where happiness lies. And think about a practice as an athlete. I mean, if you kind of loaf it at practice, don't be surprised to kind of find yourself unfulfilled. Um, and so, a kind of deeper view of freedom that you think about like, a, you know, we think of freedom as to, I can do what I want when I want. Uh, but we think about an athlete or learning a musical instrument or a foreign language or getting in shape where the freedom grows. Freedom has the ability to do the good. Any, anybody can hit a lucky shot, but a good player is consistent and reliable. So I kind of saw in my life that if, if you want to, if you really want to be great, if you really want to be happy, uh, how about you give the real game of life what you've been given academics and athletics, things like that. And it was just a whole new world that opened up to me. Uh, and so that kind of brings us to sloth. Sloth um, is the spiritual tradition understands it is not laziness. It's not just laziness. Uh, in Aquinas, for example, it's sorrow at the difficulty of a spiritual good. Uh, it's, so you see this good, it's like a new year's resolution, right? I, I wanna climb this mountain, but it looks too hard. And so I, I'm sad. And then I just kind of roll over and die. And I find myself, now here's the symptoms, it, bored. <laughs> unfulfilled, restless. And, and then what happens when you're sad, you turn to comfort food, right? And that might be food. It might be pornography. It might be drugs, drinking. It might be texting that ex. You know, so all, all of a sudden when you're kind of sad and lonely, now you're vulnerable. And the thing is with, with sloth, it's, it's, it, it could be a spiritual laziness or a kind of an apathy or an indifference. Um, but you can be a workaholic and struggle with sloth. You, because when you're, when you're unfulfilled and restless, you feel you're you either entertain yourself, maybe social media and the like, or you just work yourself to death because you want to drown out that, the, you want to numb the sadness. You want to numb that sadness. And so sloth, it, it, it's a sadness, but it, it really uh, quickly looks for other outlets and other sins. And so it's, you know, if you're struggling with pornography, things like that, you, you might step back and say, okay, you can't just not do it. How can I fill myself up with the true, the good and the beautiful? How can I really live life to its full and how might that impact my struggles here in this area? I think that we were talking about this in the, you know, th throughout the day. And I remember reading about sloth and thinking, um, like, if that's not true, I don't know what is like when you just get almost like discouraged. Cause you're like, it's just too hard. And I think that I don't, I'm speaking on behalf of myself, but with this whole coronavirus thing, um, I have had like every emotion that there is with this. You know, and because like, you know, when you first find out about it, you're just like, struck with how I was just so sad thinking about people, Colin, like you were praying for it. people who are dying alone and not because they're homeless or they don't have family people who like if one of us were to get it, we wouldn't be able to be at each other's bedside kind of thing, you know, and I mean, just break my heart and just the, the workers and everyone, you know, I've just been so there's such an emotion with this in general. But there's also the the human emotion that's almost like the how do I deal with this every day and this whole that coronavirus thing you know you swing from you know one day you're like we're gonna clean this house top to bottom like we are gonna you know my emails going to zero like that's my dream someday you know like we're you have all this like energy you know we're gonna do this and then like the next day you're like it's like one o'clock and we're all sitting in our pajamas and I'm like what happened to us you know like I mean it's like the greatest snow day that ever happened on repeat and spiritually, I, we've talked about this a lot. You're like, I'm going to read every book on my nightstand and there's 25 right now, but I'm going to read them all, you know? And like, I want to, we're going to pray the rosary every day. We're going to, you know, like we were, we, we start, we love the liturgy, the hours. So we've been playing, praying the hours with the kids. And, but at the same time, like you miss one, you miss this, someone's, you know, you stay up too late, you wreck the next day. I don't know. I'm just speaking on behalf of all the stay-at-home moms out there who are just like, these are the, these are the days that never end. Like they just go on and on. And, you know, and then for him, you know, having to learn how to teach on Zoom. And so I just, this sloth thing is really interesting to me because there are a lot of days where I feel restless and I feel like, what did I even do today? But I'm so tired because I did stuff all day, but you don't see that like fruit, you know what I mean? And so I just, I, I speak on behalf of sloth. It's like, and then you start looking at your spiritual, like, 
desires and things that you want to grow in and things you want to do. And it comes right up against, you know, just the busyness of life. And so it's really good to pray through sloth because, um, I'm a, I'm a very, like, I'm a doer. I like to get a lot done. I, you know, there's always kind of something that is on my list of things to do. And the Lord and my spiritual director and my friends have been so good over the years to kind of just kind of like help me to, to put first things first. And he always talks a lot about don't let, you know, a good become the enemy of the best. And that's always something that's really, you know, when you're looking at your own life and you're looking at some of these things, like, even if it's a good distraction, it's still a distraction. Amen. Or even if it's a good, it's a good, and you know, you have to really pray through like, but am I still using it as a distraction? Um, I got my butt kicked in college when someone quoted somebody and, uh, they were like, yeah, if the devil can't make you bad, it'll make you busy. And I was like, Oh dear God. Like, Oh, I mean, like it was like sucker punch hit me. And I was just like, that's me. You know, like I, you know, a lot of people, you just struggle with that and struggle with even if it's good things for the Lord. So whether you're struggling with sloth in the way that you're just like, uh, I mean, that rabbit hole of social media where, you know, I've heard from a lot of students, a lot of people who are like, I really have been on my phone for like seven or eight hours today. And some of it's work and some of it's good and some of it's school. And, but a lot of it is just like searching for something fulfilling. And if you're not careful, and if you don't have good friends and good accountability partners, and if you don't have a plan, um, those temptations come on real strong and there's not a lot of accountability. I mean, my college girls and guys that I've been talking to, they miss their roommates. They miss their sweet mates. They miss their people in their life that, you know, people that they could go to and say, speak truth to my heart. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm a little lost right now. And this is not good for me. Tell me it's not good for me. Tell me, ask me how long I've been on my phone, you know, talking to this person, you know, whatever it is. And again, fill in the blank, whatever you're struggling with right now. Um, but we're just in unprecedented times. And, and I know myself, I have felt kind of beat up at times over the last couple of weeks of just like, I feel like I just, you know, I have these desires and I want to do all this, but I also just feel like, like he said, you look at the mountain and you're like, I think I'll take a nap. Like, you know, like, I just don't know. It's, it's so different and hard right now. Yeah. The ancient monks called it the noonday devil. That, that afflicts the monk around 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Like the day's been going, but it's not, it's not ended. And they, they talk about you keep looking out the window and you keep, and then you start pining for your old life and you kind of are pining for life el elsewhere. And you know, when we're, we're sad and lonely and bored, we start kind of um, saying, I deserve this. I deserve maybe this, this pornographic thing, or I deserve that. Or we, we start seeking compensations because as, as Aquinas put it, man cannot live without joy. And if he can't find it spiritually, he'll seek it physically. Uh, so I think I really do think sloth is one of the kind of overarching kind of uh, vices of our age, kind of a malaise that just depresses us. And then we look for outlets. And one of the things that that has helped me and sloth, because, again, everybody struggles with it a little bit. You know, I mean, there's always kind of that like restlessness. I think that's fair. Sure. Um, one of the things that really helps me and, you know, our marriage, our family is some type of a plan and order. Yeah. Right. So, so for, for instance, my account accountability partner sitting right next to me. And, um, one of the things that we ask each other a lot is not just like, how are you doing, but like, how can I pray for you? And that's been a really good, it kind of gives you a, like a self check of, that's a great question. How can you pray for me? And then all of a sudden some days I'm like, oh yeah, it's like, you know, he's coming from work and I'm like, I haven't had my 30 minutes of mental prayer because today has been psycho. So like, he's really good about asking me, like, have you had your 30, like, we really believe in mental prayer. It's really important getting that quiet time with the Lord. Um, so he, he'll like take the kids and be like, go on a walk or he'll, you know, or like, you know, go to the chapel, go, you know, with this, it's hard with coronavirus. Right. But it's all about like having a plan. And so I just want to throw this out to all the young adults out there, um, to all the young families out there, to all the, you know, just wherever you are in life. Um, it's good to have kind of like a Corona, a Corona plan, right? Like this is kind of what I want the day to look like and to kind of have breaks involved to have, you know, um, the, we always joke that the monastic domestic church, right? Like that's what we joke. Our household is the, you know, the MDC. And so we really try to put in prayer times during the day so that you have to like stop and kind of say, okay, what do we want? You know, let's take a break from whatever we're doing and kind of reset the deck, right? Like kind of figure this out especially in these coronavirus times, because otherwise, you know, you might be uh, working a young professional, uh, like a, a young professional at home, and you literally could sit at your desk and work for 16 hours, and no one's going to come up to you and be like, have you 
eaten today? Like, have you, did you sleep last night? Like, you know what I mean? Your boss might be like, you look awful. You know what I mean? But like, I think that there's no like real, there's no real rhythm. Amen. So I think just to really fight this sloth, you know, whether you're in whatever stage of life you are in, really sit down and be like, this is my ideal day. This is when I ideally, this is when I want to pray. This is when I'm best. He really likes to work in the morning because he loves drinking coffee. And he's like, you know, he likes to pray and work in the morning because he's like on. Um, and so, and, and I'm kind of like that too. So it's kind of like really look at your life and figure out how you can really beat that boredom, those like little like breaks where you're just distracting yourself. Like how can you keep on task, but also have the leisure and the joy and the spiritual life built into that? Yes. Yeah, no, amen. I know we got to yes. move to the next one, which um, real quick, just as a practical thing, I think uh, the combination of discernment and magnanimity uh, helps to overcome sloth. Because if you try to take on everything, if you're not discerning, then you're just like, I can't do it. You just you just give up. But if, you, <laughs> if you're real discerning about, okay, what is it that I want to go after? Just find those select things. Don't multiply devotions endlessly. Find those and then go after them with all you got. Uh, that's a good way to kind of help. The ancient monks said, stay in your cell. Stay in your cell. Just stay in your cell. Don't give in. Stay in your cell. And it's similar to like Ignatius of Loyola. Um, when, when the kind of feelings of desolation come on, um, that's the time of the lie. That's the time when the devil can play on our vulnerability. That's not the time of sober decision-making. So uh, in this deep sloth, this deep melancholy, this deep depression, oh, now oh, oh, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm tired of my spouse or maybe I'm a priest religious. Maybe I, maybe I made a mistake. That's the time of the, of the lie entering in. Yes. So the, the ancient monks yes. will tell you, if you give in then, it's going to get worse. If you push through, you'll find like an athlete a second win spiritually. Amen. And the sloth leads really well into envy. Yeah. Um, we, huh, we have four hours for this, right? Yeah. yeah? Okay. Um, envy what is- What I love about these two, they're, oh, they're both about sadness, right? Sin makes you sad. Sin Amen. turns say you it, inward. Say it, it again. Makes, sin makes you sad. Say it, it makes again. You self-absorbed. Sin makes you sad. sad. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I cut you off. No, no, I, no, I'm saying it again. I mean, like everyone needs to sit with that because the temptation is always the lie of the devil is always like, you want this. This is what you want. This is what's going to make you happy. And then I think a lot of us can attest to after the fall of whatever, it's just sadness. Yeah. It is just disappointment. It's just like, I can't believe this. I can't believe it. I mean, again, envy, sloth, all of, all of the different vices in our life. Like, it's just good to remember that sometimes because there's a lot of temptation out there, especially yeah. right now. But, I mean, virtue turns you outward. It frees you for love of God, love of neighbor all sin, but especially these two, sloth and envy, they turn you inward, you become self-absorbed. Uh, mm. Virtue takes you into reality, the stars, other people. Sadness turns you inward. You want to get away from wherever you are, or you want to just kind of live on the virtual thing, which can be good, but can also be a distraction. Yeah. We were just going to make the point with envy and, you know, envy and jealousy and all of it can be really hard because I speak about this a lot. You know, I, I go into a high school, I go into a college Newman center, I go into a theology on tap and everyone is just, you're just looking around. Right. I mean, it's just like this constant, like, am I enough? Am I enough? Am I enough? And I think those are two of the questions that we ask a lot as human beings is like, am I enough? And am I ever going to be truly loved? And, and then what is it going to take to get there? And we, he said it earlier, we're such a performance based like society. We, we even, you know, our American, you know, heritage comes out sometimes because it's just like, even in our spiritual life, it's like, am I enough? Have I done enough? Is God happy with me? Is he pleased with me? Um, I don't want to disappoint him. That means I just got to, you know, what do I need to do to, to make him love me? You know, and I play, I remember that, that really was hard for me. That was a huge part of my conversion, um, was working through that and, um, and, and trying to see our heavenly father, um, in that light of loving father and not me just trying to like make the team and not get cut and be enough. And, um, it's really exhausting. Totally. And so when we speak about envy and when we speak about jealousy, uh, one of my favorite things he pointed out to me actually was the kind of the slight difference between jealousy and envy, how jealousy is saying like, I want what that person has and envy is saying, I want what that person has and I don't want them to have it. And it, it, I mean, again, both bad, but there's something about envy where it's like, you know, especially in a world of social media, you just you scroll, right? Like you just scroll and you scroll and you scroll. And for some reason, you know, sweet little, I, my example is always Joanna Gaines. Like I love Joanna Gaines. Right. But like, every time I leave her, I have to, I look around my house and I'm like, I think I just need to burn it down and start over because it's just not good enough. Like, and somehow that makes me not good enough. And that has never, ever been Joanna Gaines's intention. She's just trying to help people pick out rugs, right? Like she's 
beautiful and wonderful and helping us. But yet sometimes, you know, you put yourself up against someone else and you're like, oh, well, why do I even try? Yeah. You know what I mean? Why should I even try? I'm just going to go paint my house white and make a Christmas, put a Christmas tree up all year long. And it's going to be fine. You know what I mean? Like, so I just, I really come to everybody tonight and I just say, we are at a very vulnerable time because you don't have your friends around eye to eye, face to face, like in person saying, you're beautiful. You're great. You got this. Like, yeah. like we don't have a lot of that affirmation. That's, you know, just being human. Like we miss it. We want it back. We're made for it. Um, we don't have that. And so we are going to be very vulnerable to the game of comparison and envy and jealousy. And especially with all the fear of the unknown right now too. So I was talking to a lot of, you know, college students, you know, young adults, they're like, well, now I'm like, you know, I'm looking at my coworkers and I'm like, which one of us is going to go first? Like, you know, I'm trying to compare myself in meetings. Like, am I going to make the cut? It's like, oh my gosh, you guys, like, this is so stressful. So I just want you to hear us say that this comes in a hundred different forms but we're really vulnerable in a vulnerable spot right now. Totally. And, and just, so just to make sure we define everything, uh, traditionally jealousy is where you desire the good that another has. And, and obviously that can go bad, but it, it could in principle be neutral or good. If, if you see a teammate that's working harder than you and you say, well, I want, I want to play like that. I want to have those skills. And so you maybe you need to work harder to attain that same good. But envy is sadness at the good of the other. Envy plays a zero sum game. Env envy is inherently, as you said, competitive and so envy is inimical to love because if love is willing the good of the other where their good becomes your good their joy is your joys their stars their joy envy just undermines that whole thing so envy leads obviously to gossip backbiting uh, and watch spiritual envy watch being envious of the gifts of another their their impact on others what have you this can happen in you know intense catholic circles where uh you're not joyful over the um the gifts that another has been given uh, envy is just, it, it's, it's diabolical. It's, it's inimical to love. Yeah, uh, and, sure. and you are sad at the good of the other, or you rejoice at their misfortune. That's how envy is decided. So no it, sadness is, in, it's tied up to the definition of both of these sloth and envy. Yeah. Last thing on this, I think we, we would say is, um, with sloth and envy moving into mm -hmm. yeah, exes, yeah. uh, moving into the joy of relationship. Um, we could talk about that all night long. So I just want to like wrap something around all three of them and move into just this idea of, um, I don't think, I mean, there is so much insecurity right now. Um, Father Mike Schmidt Tomily last Sunday was phenomenal in this. He, he talked about what that security is just, it's, what was the word he said? It's, it's an, an illusion. illusion, an illusion. Security is an illusion. And one thing that I just want to like wrap all this in is something that has really helped me. And I've, I've shared it in uh, some of my talks before, but I call it what. Um, so I always say like, when you're like struggling, say what and ask why. And what stands for, if it's making me feel worthless, anxious, or tempted, step back and say what and ask why. And here, here's like a, a good practical, like something that I've had to work through in my life. Um, like worthless, anxious, or tempted. I don't think anybody can say they've, they've not been on social media or been somewhere, you know, vi like virtually and not felt worthless, anxious, or tempted. And the question becomes not just like he said, you know, our emotions, we're not supposed to just like stuff them. It doesn't bother me. It's fine. Like you don't push them away. Right. You have to ask why, like, why am I feeling this? So your, you know, your best friend, I, this is always my fun. I just think it's hilarious, but like, I have so many girls that'll come up to me and be like, yeah, my best friend's dating like the most amazing man. And I just walk behind them and watch them walk around. I mean, we're not coronavirus. You know, and they're like, and I'm so happy for them. I really am. And I also want to break their arms off, right? Like they're holding hands, right? Or whatever. And she's like, it's like that inherent, like I just, for some reason, it makes me feel worthless, anxious, tempted, whatever. And that comes in a million different forms. And so I just really want to encourage everybody out there that's watching this, especially if you feel like you've been bullied and beat up a little bit by the social media experience of the last month. Um, what accounts, what people, what celebrities, what former people in your life, what, 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 is making you feel worthless, anxious, and tempted. And don't just go, yeah, that just is what it is. Go, why? And like, take that to prayer and take that to your trusted friends, right? You know, like take it to people that you trust and say, I'm kind of struggling with this. This is that vulnerability that is so beautiful, right? Like availability, vulnerability, accountability, Sarah Swafford's big three, right? That make a great friendship. 
um, take that to the Zoom Bible study, take it to your Zoom best friend and be like, hey, are you struggling with this? And then my big challenge is, is um, if you can, unfollow that person or that account for one week and just see if it helps. Yeah. Just see what, I mean, I'm gonna guess you're gonna find some freedom, right? Um, just, just see what happens. And again, I'm not throwing anybody under the bus, you know, you know, not throwing anybody or anything under the bus, but just really watch and start asking why. Go for yeah. it. We're uh, going into no, X's. I, yeah, well, I, I, we could probably do that in the Q&A a little bit because we're running short on time. But I would say the, the, the text your X and uh, ask yourself, honestly, to what end? To, to what end? What, what's, what's my real motivation here? Um, yeah. And I think, I think in our heart of hearts, we know I'm, I'm bored. I'm lonely. I'm down. I'm insecure. And, and I'm looking for I'm looking for a pick me up. Now maybe that's not always the case, but that might often be the case. I think you have to ask to to what end am I doing this, and to what you know to what extent is all is, uh, these things that I'm struggling with things on the outside, are they at root kind of symptomatic of a deep spiritual ailment that I'm unfulfilled and so I'm reaching. We're all made for the infinite. We all want the infinite. We're yearning for the infinite. And if we can't if we don't find it in the Lord, we're going to take a bunch of finite things and shove it in to try to fulfill that because we're all going to worship something. What is our Amen. matter of ultimate concern? Amen. What consumes our time, our money, our emotional, psychological energy? That's what we worship, even for believers. Amen. That is truly what we worship. And I think it's so hard, you know, um, like everything he just said is true. And everything that we're talking about is like true, but it's really hard when you're, you know, <laughs> I've, from here to here. here to here is a big jump, right? And so I just want to speak with love. To all of those guys and girls out there, a lot of you, I, a lot of people uh, that I have in my head right now are people that have messaged me and just said like, man, it's really hard not to like feel completely insecure or worthless or just like, you know, so-and-so hasn't texted or checked on me or, you know, all these like little things that we affirm ourselves with, right? Like a lot of that's in person and now people aren't texting and calling and blah, blah, blah. For all of you that are struggling with just be, you know, missing people, but especially for those of you out there who are single and maybe had people in the past or relationships in the past, um, about half of my ministry, I think has, it really has, is, is helping people get through breakups. And that's whether you dated them or not. One more time. Half of my ministry is really helping people hit that reset button and get through a breakup, whether you dated for real or not. And what I mean by that is, is this is these last couple of weeks are really the time, the great time of emotional virtue, right? Like this is the time of emotional virtue in the sense that don't doubt your worth. Yeah. Don't doubt that you're enough. Don't doubt the God, you know, God loves you. Like you are, you are a beloved son or daughter of God. And this whole like relationships thing is really messy. But like he said, as you're getting ready to text that guy or that girl or whatever, you know, whatever situation you're in, you got to really ask yourself to what end and what is this maybe trying to fill? Um, do you really, you know, I always say sometimes relationships is like the greatest, like a breakup, sorry, a breakup is like, sometimes there's the greatest gift because you have clarity. Mm -hmm. Like that rejection is so hard. Like I'm speaking to a lot of men right now. That is so hard. You know, whether you've been friend zone, cold called, you know, I mean, I can go on forever. I mean, whatever, like all that stuff, right? Like sometimes just knowing is like that rejection is freedom because you can you can say I want to be with someone who wants to be with me just as much as I want to be with them, and I want to be with someone who sees and values me as a beloved son or daughter of God. Period. Mm -hmm. So I just like period exclamation point star heart whatever else like I don't want you to crawl back to anybody that doesn't know your worth and your beauty and your profound dignity. Have confidence in that. The Swaffords are just trying to like douse you with confidence that you're a beloved son or daughter of God. And, and that is your identity. Amen. Amen. So don't just don't feel like these times, like we just talked about for this whole 30 minutes. Don't talk about like in these times of desolation, down, insecure, depressed, unknown, fear of the unknown, every emotion in the book, probably not a sober time to jump into a relationship. Amen. Um, but it is a great time to like zoom with people. Maybe, I mean, I've had a couple of people say like they've been zooming with someone that they were like about to get into a relationship with. And it's been weird that they can't go on a date unless they're sneaking out to target, which I think is really funny. Um, and awesome. Uh, but zooming people is getting to know people. So like, don't be afraid of, again, the relationships that you've prayed through that God might be calling you to. Um, but don't feel like you have to creep into your past to find your worth. 
Amen. 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 Yes. The Lord is at work even now. He's at work. He really is. And a lot of this is a good reflection time. Amen. I said in something else, like you put like it, the pause button has been hit on everybody's lives. Pause. The question is whether or not we want to do the hard work that takes it takes to do a hard reset, kind of like on your phone where you hit two buttons and it just all goes down and then it all comes back and it seems to be faster and smarter and nicer and all these things. It's less buggy. Like, I feel like that's what I, that's what we talked about. We wanted for our lives was, um, I've been loving that quote, make sure that when this is over, uh, we go back to things that are worth going back to. And I've just really been, been praying with that because it's true. Yeah. You know, it's really true. And that includes exes. Don't go to well, things that aren't worth going and, back you know, to. We got to switch gears here, but I think this is part of both of our stories that that um, you come to realize that unless you find happiness as a single, unless you find out what's really important in life, you find the Lord. Um, if you're not happy individually, you'll never be happy in a relationship. I joke with my students, it, it's, amen, it's, it's amen, multiplication. Amen, amen. It's not it's not addition, right? So one half, one half, don't make a whole. Right. It makes a fourth. <laughs> if, if you don't find healing yourself, no, for real, but it, it, it's just, it's just true. I see it over and over again. So if you're reaching out because you're lonely or sad or depressed, that's actually the recipe for something to blow up in your face. It's just not going to work out yep. that way. And so take this time, sit with the Lord. You're on the cross. It's hard, yes. uh, but let the Lord open your heart in ways that maybe he hasn't been able to uh, for whatever reason, there's something happening. There's Trust a, the Lord. Well, He's at work, not just in consolation, but also in desolation. Well, and the distractions are gone. Amen. Like a lot of the distractions have been stripped away uh, and we're being stretched. Um, and remember, you can't make anyone your savior because you you will put, that's too much pressure. No one can be your God and you will always end up disappointed. Um, and we both speak uh, from experience on that. So you can take that to the bank. Um, you want to run with people, not at each other. You want to run with them to the Lord. Run to heaven, take as many people as you can with you. Um, that's like Sarah Swafford. Run one. so as to win, say St. Right. Paul. That's Find right. the imperishable okay. crown. We want to take all the questions, but we also want to just take a pause and say, everything we just said is easy to say and very hard to do. And so just know that like, none of this is easy, but it's worth it. Yes, yes? Amen. Yeah. Okay, Amen. Colin, you're up, babe. Amen. I'm sorry, we just keep Amen. chatting. Thank you so much for that message. It's a message I know for sure that I need to hear. Uh, so we have questions that have been popping up, but before I get to them, can you, just in case we don't get to all of them, Sarah and Andrew, how can we stay in touch with you? What are your social networks? Go ahead. Twitter. Uh, so I'm on Twitter, Andrew underscore Swafford, S-W-A-F-F-O-R-D. Uh, I teach at Benedictine College in Kansas. Uh, you can so find his email. Email, online. it's all on there on the website. Um, and I'm, I'm housed over at emotionalvirtue.com. Uh, chilling over there, hanging out. Uh, I love I, I Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, but um, I like direct messages on Instagram. It's um, the little button where you can press down and talk. Love that. That's really helped my life. So yeah, but we, we're praying for everyone. We love you. We're proud of you. Keep fighting the good fight. Um, if we don't get to say it, like we really are proud. I, I just am so proud of people, especially young adults. This is a crazy world and a crazy time and the unknown. And we've just been really pouring into you prayerfully. Uh, and Jesus, like he wants a hold of your heart. I mean, like, do not run from him. He is like drawing you close, even though it might be hard and it might not feel like it. He really is. And we love you guys too. And be assured that we're going to be keep praying for you guys and be assured Sarah, now that I know your husband's such a great speaker as well, we're going to be bringing you both back into the city soon as everything opens he's back the up. Cooler, he's the cooler Swafford. He's the better looking Swafford. He's the smarter Swafford. He's a gem. I absolutely, he, we like doing ministry together, Colin. You, you, I mean, it's been really cool. We have five kids. So it's a little hard for us to travel together, but we love coming and speaking together. And especially young adult. We sure. love, we love you young Amen. adults. You guys are so stinking fun. We're definitely gonna get you guys back. So hey, let me just get to one question here. So the question is, we're told to always be productive, especially if we struggle with work, work, uh, workalism or workaholism, might be a manifestation of sloth. How do we be unproductive in a healthy way? Mm, hmm. Such a great question. You know, I, I, uh, I, I just posted, a, I write for Ascension's uh, 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 Bible blog, uh, and I just posted a blog on sloth that came up last night. So if you want to check that out for more, but one of the things that the monks will say uh, is, is, to, is to be festive. To be so think about what it, what it means to enter the Sabbath or to celebrate a holy day. You got to push that pause button on on the rat race that you're chasing. So there's this strange combination sloth where um, you're you're maybe not truly productive, but neither are you at peace. And so I would say the task is uh, to know the seasons in life, seasons in your day. Go after what you're going to go after, 
but have the humility to push the pause button, enter into what really matters. The slothful person can't do that. They, can, they can't push the pause button, they either keep working or when they push the pause on the work, they just, they never enter into the real. So go look up at the stars some night, read a book, that's not just so you can have a conversation about it, not just so you can learn something. Like a, uh, pick up a C.S. Lewis book, pick up like Screwtape Writers or Great Divorce. Do something that's, that doesn't have an intrinsic uh, instrumental end. It's, it's, it's just for its own. So think about a kid playing with a bug. I mean, he's, just, he's, just, he's, just, he's just entranced in reality. Right? He's just lost in the real. Or think about those conversations you've had where you're just like, you just enter the dance, the conversation versus those ones where you've been almost watching yourself have the conversation. Ooh, how did I sound? How did I come across? Yes. Enter into life. And part of life is work, but also it's festive. It's rejoicing, right? As Catholics, we fast and we feast. Don't be afraid Amen. to feast on appropriate occasions and push the pause button from the workaday world. And I also think like, like I said, order, you know, like ordering in, um, you know, I, I love that. I think it's Pope Francis that talks about, um, wasting time with your kids. So like, I'm terrible at wasting time. I I'm always like, there's, we can be more efficient somehow. Right. So I really took that to heart years ago because my kids always tell me like, I'm like, what's your favorite thing to do with me? And they're like, play Legos. And I'm like, Oh, great. You know what I mean? Like, I'm hoping it's like Yahtzee. Cause that's my favorite, you know, like, but they love like wasting time together, you know? And so maybe whatever that means for your state in life. Just like wasting some time and and please promise me that you'll waste some time with the Lord um, and just really take that time, that 30 minutes of mental prayer, that walking rosary, that whatever just like breathes new life into you, like make time for that. Amen. Like we weren't made, we weren't made as human beings for the rat race. Do we need to be productive? Do we need to get stuff done? Do we not have a choice sometimes because we're moms and dads and priests and religious and singles who have a ton of stuff to do? You were made for leisure culture. You were made for the real, the spiritual, the deep, the emotional. You were made for all of it. So don't let the good become the enemy of the best when that time comes where you need to step back and be filled up. So, yeah. and this is really hard to do, especially right now um, in just the state that we're in. So we have all this free time. It's like, how are we going to use it? But yeah, there's also a thousand things to do um, that fill that free time very quickly. So to be very intentional about how you're ordering your day. I think that, and then again, you want bonus points, accountability. So having someone that you're checking in with and being like, how's it going? Are you keeping up with your, you know, ideas that you have for your order, things like that. That's awesome. Yeah. Amen. Uh, so we'll have one last question. We'll run out of time, but do you guys have any recommendations for any prayers against envy and jealousy? Mm. Ooh. And the litany of humility. Yeah. The, 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 the sisters of life. Um, well, the litany of humility, but also the litany of trust from the sisters of life. Or, that's what I mean. Is that what you meant? That's what I mean. Um, litany of humility is like a kick in the pants, but yeah. do that one. It's really intense. I, I meant this um, one. the litany of humility was, um, a sister built the litany of trust off the litany of humility. Yeah. The litany of trust is gorgeous. Um, I, I pray it every day. Uh, it's just like, again, God, we almost have to be okay. Also father Jacques Philippe, love him. Um, there's a book where he has a quote that talks about, um, so much of this is a re-education of the soul. And so much of, you know, because again, we were brought up, we were brought into a family, we were brought into a church, we were brought into, you know, all of us have our own subjective life DNA, our personalities, things like that. But a lot of the spiritual life is like re-educating your soul. Um, like for me, it was to, to understand that God loves me just the way that I am. And, you know, but too much to leave me there. He wants me to grow and, you know, become whole and heal and, and do all these things. But my, like his love for me is not performance-based. It doesn't go up or down based on like what, how I perform. And I really had that for a long time. I was like, you know, like God, you know, God's just watching me and he's like, has a meter on me, you know, like, um, and so to really enter into that idea of, envy, jealousy, competition, comparing, tearing people down, gossiping, feeling like you're not enough, insecurity, like deep doubt, fear. I mean, we're human. We are going to struggle with some of that. But at, at some point, the only way you beat this is radical conviction and radical confidence in your identity as a beloved daughter or son of God. And that no one can take that away from you because they didn't give it to you. The Lord did. So whatever they said to you in junior high, whatever your ex said to you, whatever somebody said to you, that is a label. That is not your identity. Your identity is set and it is in stone. And we are the ones that walk away from our identity. We're the ones that let the devil convince us otherwise. 
but our identity is set. And then you go to people who are going to remind you of your identity. You go to friends that are going to speak truth into your heart and love you and help you to heal and help you to get through tough times like breakups, like coronavirus, like losing your job. Like, I mean, everything everyone is entering into right now. That's why we are so desperately like trying to like just pour into you guys that your prayer life, your friends, accountability partners, people to, to be there for you, to be real with you. Now is more than ever a time where take the time to establish those friendships, those relationships, your relationship with the Lord. Um, he's got this pause button. You know, there is a pause button. What are we going to do with it? And I, I just, oh, I'm just, I'm, I'm so excited, but I also know that it's really hard and I'm, I, we think it's hard. It's been hard to execute what we want to execute as a married couple, as you know, parents, um, to all of you out there that are like, I just, I'm, I'm having a hard time keeping my day, like just staying above water, you know, like, totally. so go ahead. Sorry. I didn't mean to. Oh, no, I, you're exactly right. I think bottom line is when first things are put first and second things are not diminished, but enhanced. And yeah. so how do you put first things first? I mean, here, here's kind of an ignition principle. Imagine yourself on your deathbed and look back at your life. And, and what would you want yourself to value now? Because all these things with MV slot, all these things, you're, you're, you're trying to trying to put all your stock in kind of finite things of this world, right? So um, it, the more the first things are put first, and um, then the more these things start to take care of themselves. And it's not easy, but I think that's the only way to do it. I think it's from Fulton Sheen. He said that the person who fears death the most is the person who's thought about death the least. And so our, and the catechism got some great lines on this right on catechism 1010 10, thereabouts. Um, are we really living our life in light of what's most important? And to the extent that we are, these things I think will fall into line. And to the extent that they're not, we're going to have more and more of these struggles. Amen. Faith, virtue, friendship. Real, I mean, it's all so good. And if anything's dragging you away from it, you say, what? And why am I letting this in my life? Why, why am I letting things that are making me feel worthless or anxious or tempted? Like I got to walk from this and I got to put a, a truth in its place, uh, replace that lie with the truth. Yeah. And hopefully some of this conversation gives you the, just the unbelievable conviction that we want for you freedom, joy, and peace that the world cannot give. And it's, it's in our Lord and it's, it's, you know, with the people that are running to him and the people that are running and it's not easy and it's not pretty and it's not perfect, but we're running and we're in this with you because we're, we're right here with you uh, during this really diff difficult time. And Colin, thank you so much for having yeah. us. And um, we're just praying for you guys, especially there in the heart of New York City. Yeah. Um, it just, I'm, it's really beautiful that you guys are doing this for everybody uh, who desperately needs it in New York and everywhere else because it's just tough. It's really tough out there. Yeah, we're, we're praying for y'all. We're in this together, right? We, we yes. are a body. We, we are together in this. So thank you for your witness. Thank you for all you're doing. And, and if, if, you, if you struggle, who cares? Get back up, right? The Lord, as Pope Francis said, the, the Lord never gets tired of forgiving us. We just get tired of asking. Amen. Amen. And that's exactly right. So, so and, and Lewis put it this way, and Mir Christian's like, you, know, you might get some marks for an imperfect answer, but leaving it blank is not going to get you anything. Just, keep, just go back again <laughs> and again and again. It's all right, brother. It's all right. You yeah. Know? We're in this together. And I'm just looking at the Divine Mercy right behind Colin's shoulder and seeing our Lord standing right there and just saying like, they speak truth. These people speak truth. And Colin spoke truth with the divine mercy in the beginning of this too. Like just run to him, man. He wants to douse you in it. So Amen. thanks for having us, Colin. You are awesome. Amen. We can't wait to come hang out with you guys when this is all over. Guys, I can't thank you enough. And I hope everyone's really soaking in this message because we have to remember that God sees the past, the present, and the future as one present moment. Everything that's happening right now, everything we're experiencing right now, he knew it was going to happen before the foundation of the world, which means he has a plan. God is not going to be outdone by everything that's happening right now. You know, we have to take what Paul, St. Paul says very seriously. With sin abounds, grace abounds all the more. Mm -hmm. Jesus says in the Divine Mercy Diary, he says, the greater the misery, the greater they have the right to my mercy. Again, yeah, and that makes it beautiful. So it, it's a matter of what you guys have been saying. Where are we putting our time, our efforts, and our energy? we got to tap into those graces. So we just encourage the Daily Rosary the daily divine mercy chapel especially for those who are dying spiritual communion the office that you guys are praying because i promise you right now because the way it works with god since we don't have access to the sacraments these prayers are all the more powerful than they were even two months ago the graces are still available and he's going to give us what we need so guys i cannot thank you enough for coming on 
Uh, please, I know we didn't get to all the questions. I'm sorry about that. Please feel free to reach out to Sarah and Andrew on their social networks. We'll type them in on the, on the page, on our page after the show. Also, please check out Catholic NYC Presents YouTube channel. We download all the episodes to that afterwards. Please like our Catholic NYC Facebook page and Instagram uh, for the future shows that we got coming on. And guys, again, I can't thank you enough. Andrew, Sarah, please know that you guys are in our prayers. Your family's in our prayers. We love you. And I am going to be bringing you, I'm going to at least try to bring you guys back to New York. We're both of you, but I understand if you can't. We'd love to have you back. <laughs> Oh no, we would love to go. He's never been. And all I was like, was like, you have to come and like, I loved it. So, but thanks for having us. And for all that you guys do, you guys do amazing work. And uh, just on behalf of all of us, like, keep it up, man. It's hard right now. I know it's hard to do your job right now, but uh, just keep bringing people together. We're so grateful. You guys are awesome. God bless you all. God bless you guys. We love you. We're praying for everyone. Thanks guys. Thanks everybody watching. God bless. Peace.